Hey everybody, welcome back to the 51 Yarns Spin Along. My name is Bex from the Tiny Fibre Studio podcast and each week I do a video that coincides with Ply Magazine's 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off Spin Along. I am not affiliated with Ply Magazine or sponsored by them in any way, it's just a resource that I find really useful. And if you take part in the Spin Along and you post a photo on Instagram, uh, Facebook or Ravelry, you get the opportunity to win a year's subscription to Ply Magazine, which is awesome. So, on with the show. This week is week 13, which is three ply, and I've spun up a really, 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 really small sample to be able to show you this because I don't have a three ply work in progress right now. I did talk a lot about three ply and the properties of three ply and why I like spinning three ply in the very first video of this series, which was the default yarn episode. So I'll put a link at the end of this episode so that you can really easily get to it. And there'll be a link in the description as well. So if you're looking for information about the properties of three ply, head to that video. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the practicalities of spinning it though. The first thing to consider is that it may well take you a bit more fibre to be able to complete a three ply as opposed to a two ply. Uh, your mileage will vary, but if particularly if you're a beginner and you're sort of not able to regulate the diameter or grist of your yarn, then you may want to consider getting about 50% extra if you're going to do a three ply. Another thing that you have to consider is that you need to be able to store three lots of singles and then have something to ply onto which is one of the reasons why a lot of wheels will come with four bobbins. A couple of ways around that though, you can use literally anything that you can wrap yarn around. So you could use um, toilet roll or paper towel inner tubes, you know, the, the cardboard from the inside of those. Um, you can use weaving bobbins, that's a very popular one and that also has the advantage of uh, being very, very small. For me personally, because three ply is my default yarn and I spin quite a lot of it, I have four of each type of bobbin for each of the flyers that I have. This is actually a woolly winder style bobbin that's made by Acreworks. If you haven't come across Acreworks before, they are amazing and I love them. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by them. The reason that I love these is that they flat pack so I can actually take the ends off. Normally I wouldn't be doing this if there was any yarn on them, but there's not enough to fall off the ends of the bobbin. Um, and then they come in a little case that allows them to flat pack like that. So those are very, very cool. I have eight of these in total, uh, four for the lace flyer and then four for the woolly winder, but the woolly winder ones also fit the standard flyer as well. So that's really helpful. And that is what I am gonna be plying onto today. This incidentally is the core yarn from the last video. So I'm I'm gonna maybe try some more core spun. So I'm gonna leave that on, but I'll just kind of add this one on to the end of uh, the three ply. And the other thing to think about is you need something to act as a lazy cate. This can be anything from a shoe box with some knitting needles poked through it, and then you can as long as your knitting needles are thin enough to go through the middle of your bobbin, you can just put a knitting needle through it and have it attached inside a shoe box. So that goes into the shoe box, knitting needle goes through the side of the shoe box, through the bobbin, out the other side of the shoe box. Really easy option and uh, for a lot of people that's how they start with a lazy cape. There are lots of other Lazy Kate options. My previous one was an Ashford one, which was tensioned. I think it's called the Ashford Competition Kate. Um, it holds, from memory, I think it holds three bobbins and uh, it has a tensioning system. So like a piece of fishing line that goes around the outside of the bobbins that you can adjust and that provides tension. The reason you want tension is so that when you uh, pull on your singles, they don't kind of spin the bobbins all the way around and end up twisting back on themselves. Nowadays, my preferred Lazy Kate is my Acreworks one, which is this. Um, it does have a tensioning system, which 
comprises of these little things called Tensi Tamers and basically Tensi Tamers fit on top of the bobbin and they just give a little tiny bit of resistance on the top of the bobbin and you can adjust that for each bobbin individually which is kind of cool. The other thing that you can do with this one which I normally do if I'm doing anything less than a four ply is because I've got a bobbin shaft spare because this lazy cake will take um, a total of four bobbins but if I'm not using it I will actually use this one as a yarn guide so I'll have a tensi tamer in here and I'll actually thread my yarns through that little hole and that acts as my yarn guide so I'm going to pop my tensi tamers on So that is my Lazy Kate setup. There's one other thing that I want to talk about before we go on to actually plying, which is how to do a ply back test for three ply yarn. When I first mentioned this, which was ages ago now, um, probably over a year ago, I mentioned this and I thought that it was something that lots of people did, but a load of people were like, how do you do a three ply ply back test? So I will show you. Normally in spinning, we do a two ply ply back test. Because I spin a lot of three ply and because I want to have some vague idea of how I'm doing, I find it really useful to do a three ply ply back. So to do that, I put the orifice hook, this is the orifice hook from my Shat Matchless, I just put that towards the end of my single, I pull out a little bit of yarn and I put my orifice hook back kind of in the middle of that length that I've just pulled out, pull out a little bit more, normally I would do this longer but I want to be able to show you it all within the same frame, so I've now got the orifice hook at the end of three strands of yarn, which means that when I let it go, it'll ply back and that will give me an idea of how I'm doing when it comes to the yarn. I can also play around here with being able to put more twists into it or taking twist out. So that's what I use as an idea of how I'm doing with my yarn. I also do a two ply ply back test as well and I keep a sample of that so that it's a little bit easier when you're going along it's a little bit quicker to just kind of go like that and do two ply rather than doing the three ply so when i'm spinning in singles i'll refer to the two ply test but when i come to applying it that's when i can use the three ply ply back test as a sort of reference point okay so i switched the bobbins over and i'm now just going to thread my lazy cape if you don't have this particular one, a lot of Lazy Kates will have something vaguely similar where you can um, thread your yarns through so that they're all kind of coming from a central point. Others won't, and if they don't, that's totally fine. It's not going to mean that you can't use your Lazy Kates. They work perfectly well without, but I just personally have a preference for trying to get all of the yarns to come from roughly the same direction. Those of you watching closely will have noticed that I have removed everything from the bobbin that was already on there. That's because when I started um, plying this in the counterclockwise direction, I remembered that the last time that previous yarn was spun, it was spun clockwise, so it just started unravelling from the bobbin and I went, oh yeah, stupid, of course. It's really important that we have control of when the twist actually gets into the yarn. So I always try to separate my singles until I'm ready for the twist to go in. So I've got my three separate singles here and all I'm going to do is just put my fingers in between them and then just twist my hands a little bit. And I leave 
my little finger to be able to do the tensioning. So fingers in between, twist round, and then I can do tensioning down here. And then that back hand that's controlling the separation of the singles, that back hand doesn't move. I'm literally just moving my front hand backwards and forwards between the two, but that back hand doesn't move. Its job is literally just to separate the singles. Okay, so I've come to the end of my little teeny tiny sample. I will be doing more three ply spinning this week, so I will have some stuff that counts, but what I would then be doing is looking back at that three ply sample that I did before, and I'd be looking at that and trying to compare, okay, so how close am I to the sample that I originally spun? And that's it, that's how I spin three ply. I really enjoy it, I think it makes a beautiful yarn, and I hope you guys enjoy it too. So I hope that this video has been useful in some way, shape or form. Um, I hope you enjoy the spin along this week. In between now and the next episode, which will be fine wool, uh, you can find me on Instagram as Tiny Fibre Studio and on Ravelry, I'm Ibex. Hope this was useful and I'll see you again next week.